Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Manhattan Project. Some of you guys may recognize the name of this one. It was the secret name for America's project to produce the atomic bombs that brought World War II to an end. Harry Daglian was a young physicist who worked on the project. During an experiment on August 21st, 1945, he was attempting to build a neutron reflector manually by stacking a set of 4.4 kilogram tungsten carbide bricks in an incremental fashion around a plutonium core. Unfortunately, he dropped a brick which set off a chain reaction. He tried to stop the reaction, but by the time it was over, he received a high dose of neutron radiation. Harry received intense medical care for severe radiation poisoning. His mother and sister even flew out to New Mexico to care for him, but Harry fell into a coma. He died 25 days after the accident. His death resulted in new safety regulations when handling radioactive material. Next up at number 9 now, we have the human pig chimera. In January 2017, scientists announced they had created a real life human pig hybrid. The embryos they made were only a tiny bit human, less than 0.001%. The rest was all pig, but crucially, it was a hybrid. They only lasted for 28 days, but the scientists felt it was a step in the right direction. They hoped that eventually, animals could even grow entire human organs ready for use. How does this one make you guys feel? I know it can be pretty divisive. At number eight now, we have the Ningyo. The Ningyo is the Japanese equivalent of a mermaid, and in one special shrine, people claim they have a specimen. It's been dated to over 1,400 years old and bears a striking resemblance to the artwork depicting these creatures. Some visitors to the shrine claim that it's made out of stone or wood, but that's incorrect. It is genuine organic matter. Here's the thing though, other people say it's most likely advanced taxidermy, with people splicing them together after death. What do you guys think though? At number 7 now, we have the mouse ear. In 2016, Japanese scientists announced they had grown a human ear on the back of a rat. They used human stem cells injected into the rat. The stem cells developed into human cartilage tissue and molded in the rat into the shape of an ear. Now, The aim for all of this is to be able to help children with facial abnormalities and give them fully grown body parts from their own DNA so it won't get rejected. Coming in at number 6. Next now we have the half sheep. In June 2017, villagers from South Africa said that the offspring of a local sheep was sent by the devil, but to others though, it looked like a human sheep hybrid. When the villagers called in expert help, even the chief director of the veterinary services said that he thought it looked oddly human. The vets then took it away to study. They suspected it was due to a fever in the sheep's mother that caused the deformity, but the village elders maintained that it was sent by the devil and was born after a coupling between a man and a sheep. Sheep. All right, next up at number five now, we have the horse baby of Benin. This 2012 story comes from the city of Benin in Nigeria, where a woman gave birth to an offspring that looked a lot like a horse. This all happened in a church, with witnesses saying the mother had to hold on to someone's leg as she went into labor. The priest of the church then warned everyone around to stay clear of the demonic object. In reality, though, it is probably just a deformed human pregnancy or even a total fake because we only really have this video to go on. Coming at number 4 now, we have the Russian lamb. This claim comes from a farm in southern Russia in 2015, where a sheep gave birth to a lamb that basically looks like an old man, to be honest. See for yourself though. The video shows the lamb not long after it was born, making sort of odd grunting noises as the mother tried to clean it. The farmer was shocked, and some of the locals thought it was actually a human-sheep hybrid. The general consensus though is that it's just a facial deformity, as the rest of the lamb seemed to be in working order. Moving on to number 3 now, we have the Thai cow. In 2010, a story emerged from Thailand of a cow that had given birth to a very human-like creature. The local people poured baby powder on the body and burned incense in the hopes of cleansing the area of evil. The mouth, head and stomach were certainly quite human looking, while the hooves were clearly cow-like. Although the local people think this is some evil hybrid, there's a good chance it is just a deformed cow calf. I also think the online hysteria was made worse with these pictures because of the baby powder. It really made this thing look even creepier. At number 2 now, we have the sheep with human livers. In 2005, researchers at the University of Nevada created sheep with organs containing millions of human cells. They announced they could grow livers in sheep that were 20% human. As with other examples we've talked about, the researchers used embryonic stem cells and they did it for the same reason, to eventually develop fully grown human organs on demand. And finally at number 1, we have the human mouse. The results of this experiment experiment were announced in 2015. Scientists thought they had found a DNA sequence responsible for making human brains bigger than other animals. So they took the human gene for this and the chimpanzee
chimpanzee version of the gene and put them into mice. The ones with the chimpanzee brain DNA didn't really have much bigger brains, but the ones with human sequences grew 12% bigger. The mice would not have gone on to achieve human levels of intelligence, but these human mouse hybrid brains could be a step in that direction. Coming in at number 10 now, we have Vladimir Lenin. He is known as the father of communism and was head of the Soviet Union when it was founded in 1922. He died a little more than a year after that, with millions of Russians mourning his death. The government decided to preserve his body using a chemical mixture and remove all the organs, including the brain. Then he was put on display in a granite mausoleum where he still lies today, almost 100 years after his death. His body is maintained by a team of scientists who monitor his temperature and bodily fluids. As long as the Russian people are prepared to pay for it, Lenin's body could be preserved there for many centuries to come. Next up at number 9 now we have the dioxin tests. In 1965, dermatologist Dr. Albert Kligman conducted a study on behalf of the US Army and some pharmaceutical companies. They wanted to know how human skin reacts to harsh chemicals, a process known as hardening. Most of the information about these tests has since been destroyed or just covered up. We do know that he described his patients as acres of skin to experiment on. We also know he used dioxin on them, the active ingredient in Agent Orange. This happened around the time the US was covering Vietnam with Agent Orange in an attempt to push the fight against the Viet Cong in their favor. To speed up the experiments, Dr. Kligman injected his victims with a reported 468 times the recommended safe dose of dioxin. After that, not much more has been uncovered. It's thought there are still about 70 of the patients out there still. Their identities and current condition are known. Next up at number 8 now, we have Operation Sea Spray. In September 1950, the US Navy spent 6 days spreading the bacterium Suratisha Marcy Sens into the air about 2 miles off the coast of California. That bacterium lives in soil and water and is best known for its ability to produce a bright red pigment. This trait makes it useful in experiments because it's so bright, it's very easy to see where it is. The project was called Operation Sea Spray. Its aim was to determine the susceptibility of a big city like San Francisco to a bioweapon attack by terrorists. In the following days, the military took samples of 43 sites to track the bacteria spread. They found that it had infested the whole city and all the surrounding suburbs as well. During the test, residents of San Francisco inhaled millions of bacterial spores. The military deemed the experiment a success. They got to see how far chemical warfare could spread, and anyway, they knew the bacterium wasn't harmful, or so they thought. People started getting urinary tract infections, and it was even linked to the death of a patient recovering from prostate surgery. This experiment wasn't even public knowledge until 1976, a full 26 years after the event. Moving on to number 7 now, we have Project MK Ultra. This is a particularly famous one that you guys may have heard me talk about in a previous video. During the 1950s and 60s, at the height of the Cold War, the US feared that communist countries were using mind control techniques to brainwash US prisoners of war in Korea. They wanted in on the action. So, in response, the CIA authorized Project MK Ultra in 1953. The secret operation was aimed at developing a defense against drugs or other manipulators that could control human behavior. Such was the secrecy of this project that even today, not much is known about it. But we do know this. The project involved more than 150 human experiments involving psychedelic drugs, paralytics, and electroshock therapy. Sometimes the test subjects were aware they were participating in a study, but shockingly, many did not. Even when the hallucinogenic effects started kicking in. Can you even imagine how scary that would be? Many of the tests took place at universities, hospitals, or prisons in the US and Canada between 1953 and 1964. The CIA didn't keep many records though, and any good ones were destroyed when the program came to an official end in 1973. Moving on to number 6 now, we have North Korea. Some of the things we've all heard about North Korea may not be true, but some of them may be even worse than we could ever imagine. In 2014, a former North Korean officer stepped forward to say that the nation's military were using mentally and physically disabled children as test subjects in chemical experiments. He said this was the last straw that caused him to defect and leave the country. The man was called Im Cheon Young, and he said he was taken to special training at the military academy. It was there where they taught him how to confuse the enemy without revealing your own forces, how to carry out assassinations, and how to use chemical weapons. He was close to defecting on this alone, and then came the field learning. This involved testing biological and chemical weapons on so-called objects. At first, these objects were mice, but soon 
they were using humans. Im said that he saw with his very own eyes disabled people, sometimes children, being killed by these chemical weapons just to show the soldiers how they worked. One expert said this is not surprising. Anyone who visits the capital will never see disabled people because they are allegedly taken away as children and incarcerated in special camps. Perhaps these evil experiments are what the camps are all leading up to. Moving on to number five now, we have Project QKHILLTOP. This was a CIA project developed to study Chinese brainwashing techniques, which they used to develop new methods of interrogation. The research was led by a man named Dr. Harold Wolf. Now, he was a researcher at Cornell University's medical school. Dr. Wolf requested the CIA provide him with information on imprisonment, deprivation, humiliation, torture, brainwashing, hypnosis, and more. Based on this, the team began to formulate a plan. They wanted to develop secret drugs and various brain damaging procedures. According to a letter that he wrote, in order to fully test the effects of this, Wolf wanted the CIA to make available suitable subjects. Once they had provided these poor souls to test on, Wolf also detailed the next step his research team would take. They would then assemble, collate, analyze, and assimilate the information and will then undertake experimental investigations designed to develop new techniques of offensive, defensive intelligence using a potentially useful secret drug. Basically, the whole thing is just the stuff of nightmares. I have no idea how this got through. Nothing more is really known about the test subjects or victims, as they are often referred to now. Moving up to number four now, we have Dr. Loretta Bender. This doctor has gone down in history for her experiments on children. She was a child psychiatrist who specialized in children believed to have schizophrenia. For almost three decades, from 1942 to 1969, she was a highly respected expert in her field. Her preferred choice of treatment was electroshock therapy. These days, the practice has been banned in most of the world, as it's seen as ineffective, cruel, and borderline torture in some cases. Still, this was a different time, and that's what Dr. Bender did to the children. Her methods involved interviewing and analyzing a sensitive child in front of a large group of people. She would then apply a gentle amount of pressure to the child's head. The theory was any child who moved with the pressure was showing early signs of schizophrenia. These days, that's referred to as total pseudoscience, but it took a while to figure that out. By the time her treatments were shut down, Bender had used electroshock therapy on over 100 children, the youngest of whom was just age three. Reports described her as uncaring and the study as unethical. The shocks can cause memory loss, nausea, headaches, jaw pain, or even serious heart trouble, even in kids. Some say all of this was a result of Bender's misunderstood childhood that she had, and she was the product of her own environment and family. Now that is proper psychology, I'm just saying. Moving on to number three now, we have the Burke and Hare murders. William Burke is a guy who has probably tainted my surname forever. Along with William Hare, these two men from Northern Ireland were famous grave robbers in Scotland. One day, an old man they knew died, and to cover his outstanding debt to them, they decided to sell his body for medical science. Edinburgh University gave them seven pounds and ten shillings, a handsome sum in those days. With that, they were hooked. When another associate they knew fell ill, they couldn't even wait to see if he would die, and so they suffocated him in his bed. Again, they sold his body to the university for money. The killing spree began. The pair murdered and sold bodies almost as their full-time jobs. They killed an old grandmother with an overdose of painkillers. Hare even killed his own blind grandson by breaking his back across his knee. Eventually, though, their whole operation was discovered when they got too sloppy. William Burke was hanged in front of a cheering crowd of over 25,000 people. Fittingly, after being put on public display, his body was donated to medical science. Next up at number two, now we have J. Marion Sims. This doctor was once praised as the father of modern gynecology. Now his reputation has been tarnished forever. It was found that he practiced these surgical techniques that made him famous on enslaved women. They included Lucy, Anarcha, and Betsy. The rest of them are unknown. He performed 30 surgeries on Anarcha alone, all without anesthesia. His legacy has long been questioned for the disturbing ethical questions that it raises, especially by those who believe that he used black women as medical guinea pigs without their consent. The Black Youth Project 100, a group of activists aged between 18 and 35, staged protests at a statue of Sims in New York. They wore hospital gowns splashed with red paint dripping down their legs. In a Facebook post, they explained that Sims had purchased black women slaves and used them as guinea pigs for his untested surgical experiments. He repeatedly performed genital surgery on black women without anesthesia because, according to him, black 
women don't feel pain. Despite his very inhumane tests on black women, Simmons was named the father of modern gynecology and his statue currently stands right outside the New York Academy of Medicine. And finally number one now we have the pregnant women. In January 2018 it emerged that after the second world war the US military gave nearly 1000 pregnant women radioactive iron by their doctors without their knowledge. This was all part of a series of experiments to test the effects. Between 1945 and 1947 researchers at Vanderbilt University conducted this sick experiment that was funded by the US Public Health Service. All of the women were poor and had no knowledge of the experiment whatsoever. Afterwards they were not even informed that they had been part of the study either. The radioactive iron was given as part of a medical cocktail by health officials that they trusted. Their aim was to record the absorption of iron during pregnancy. However, in the years since then investigators have said this too was a lie and that the real reason was for the military to learn more about radiation exposure. In the 1990s Vanderbilt University finally acknowledged and investigated the experiments. The story broke when two women and one of their daughters filed a lawsuit against the university for exposing them to radiation. One of the women was Emma Kraft. She said at a Senate hearing that the experiments caused the death of her 11 year old daughter due to cancer. The true effects of the study are still being investigated today. Number 10 with Oliver. Oliver was a chimpanzee that was acquired by American trainers in 1960. Now they instantly thought something was strange about him. His face was too flat, his hair was too thin, his eyes were a strange colour and he also did something that no other chimp does. Oliver walked upright on two legs. This led his owners to speculate that he was the product of crossbreeding between a human and a chimp known as a human Z. It might sound crazy but Dr. Gordon Gallup of the University of New York said there was reason to suspect that Oliver may be a human chimpanzee hybrid. Humans and chimps share at least 99% of their basic biological chemistry. Oliver died in 2012 with the scientific community deeming him to be a normal chimp although a full complete DNA test was never done. Next up at number 9 now we have Otzi the Iceman. Ok so the last one was 100 years old and looked very alive. Otzi the Iceman doesn't look as alive but he is very old. He died about 5200 years ago. To give you guys an idea of how long ago that was the entire world population at that time was roughly the same as modern day Tokyo. Otzi's body was preserved all this time because it was found in ice in the Alps mountain range between Austria and Italy. He was discovered in 1991 by tourists who thought he was actually a recently dead person because his skin was still so intact even after 5000 years. They examined his intestines and found that it contained his last meal of deer meat and herb bread. Moving on to number 8 now we have Ramses the Great. Ramses the second is one of the most famous pharaohs of all time. He ruled over the Egyptians over 3200 years ago. His tomb was discovered in 1881 and his mummified remains were found to be very well preserved. There was still hair on the back of his head. By 1971 though experts had noticed the body was starting to deteriorate quickly despite the preservation techniques of the past. So they flew him to Paris for special treatment. Now French law required that anyone alive or dead must have a passport if they want to enter France. So Ramses II was issued an Egyptian passport over 3000 years after his death. Coming in at number 7 now we have the Tolland Man. The Tolland Man was found in a peat bog in Denmark in 1950 by locals who thought he was a recent murder victim but it turned out he was a lot older than that. Radiocarbon dating put his death at about 2200 years ago. From the rope around his neck and the marks it left it appears that the Tolland Man was killed by hanging, possibly a human sacrifice. His perfectly preserved face seems just frozen in a way that makes it look like he kind of fell asleep on the spot. X-rays showed that his heart, lungs and liver were all still intact too. So called bog bodies like this are discovered when the body is preserved by the acid of a peat bog, a lack of oxygen in it and a cold climate. But please that is not a recipe to make your own bog body. Next up at number 6 we have the Churchin Man. 
This mummy was found in China and dates to 3,000 years ago. He was found in a tomb and experts were amazed to find that no preservation techniques had actually been used on him. His body had been naturally mummified. Because of how dry and cold the air was around the body and also how salty the soil was. Now this would have helped kill off any bacteria that would normally decay the body. One fascinating thing about the Churchin man was that although he was found in China, he was found to be of European descent. This helped build a clearer picture of how people travelled and migrated around the world thousands of years ago. Moving on to number 5 now, we have George Mallory. George Mallory was an English mountaineer who attempted to climb Mount Everest in 1923. He was never seen again. Then an expedition to recover his body in 1999 found him. His body was face down in the mountain gravel and because of the climate there, he was incredibly well preserved even 76 years after his death. His skin and body had survived better than the actual clothing on him. No photos were taken of his face when they turned him over, but it was reportedly completely undamaged after all that time. A solemn expression was frozen on his face. Okay, next up at number 4 we have Eva Peron. She was the first lady of Argentina when she died in 1952 from cancer. There was national mourning for her death and her husband arranged for her to be embalmed by a man called Dr. Pedro Ara, whose work was known to some as the art of death. Now he replaced her blood with the glycerin, which preserved all the organs and kept her features lifelike so that she simply looked asleep. Three years later, a military dictatorship took power and outlawed even the mention of Eva Peron or her husband. It turns out her body was then taken to Italy then to Spain and then finally returned to Argentina 18 years after her death. When she was finally buried, the preservation techniques had still kept her looking like she'd simply just fallen asleep. Moving on to number 3 now, we have Rosalia Lombardo. Now if any of you guys have watched our top 10 scary places you shouldn't visit, you may be familiar with Rosalia Lombardo. She was almost 2 years old when she died of pneumonia in Sicily in 1920. Her heartbroken father wanted to have her preserved forever in the catacombs nearby. The mixture of formalin, zinc, salt, alcohol, silicic acid and glycerin that was used preserved her perfectly. She became known as the sleeping beauty to those around her. Some people thought it was kind of too good to be true, they didn't believe it and they called it a fake wax replica. But x-rays and scans showed that she was real and that her organs were still intact after a century had passed. The Capuchin catacombs are still still open to visitors to this day for any of you guys who want to see Rosalia up close. Next up at number 2 now we have John Torrington. John Torrington was a British officer who took part in an arctic expedition in 1846 but died of pneumonia aged 22. Nobody knew what happened to the crew until some of their greys were found on a remote Canadian island. In the 1980s scientists dug through almost 5 feet of permafrost until they hit a coffin. They opened it up and this was staring back at them, the body of John Torrington, quite literally frozen in time. The eyes were still open, still bright and blue. His skin was battered and bruised but barely decomposed. The arctic climate had acted like a perfect giant freezer. Scientists took samples to study and then buried his body back where they found it, where it could still look the exact same to this day. Finally, now at number 1 we have La Doncella. In 1999, archaeologists in the mountains between Chile and Argentina found a few mummified children from the Inca age in South America over 500 years ago. The oldest mummy, a 15 year old girl, was named La Doncella, which means the maiden, and she was almost perfectly preserved. It's thought that she was part of a ritual sacrifice by the Inca people to their gods. The frigid mountain climate had kept her body in the same position she died in, even her hair remained completely unchanged. Her clothes still retained their colour and detail right down to her shoes and her woven belt, giving the appearance that she just kind of fell asleep and could wake up at any moment. Mm -hmm.